so many. I think we can do. I think we can do a quick, uh, quick round of introduction. We will start with Lynette, and then we'll go around quickly, and then continue with the program. Good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Uh, so my name is Lynette Toy Liburwa. I am a program officer at um, at Fida Uganda. And I was I was you know, coordinating coordinating the sub sub saharan component of the study, and um, you know, like with Fila Uganda and working with Themis and and Namati, and um, yeah, you know, and I'm very glad to see all of you here today, and I'm looking forward to our discussions. Thank you. Thank you, Marta. Hi all. Good afternoon. Uh, I work as part of the Legal Empowerment Network team. Um, with Amy, with Luciana, and I was part of, of this research that we presented the other day and that we're going to talk about today. So it's a pleasure to be here. Luciana. Hi, I'm mute. Hi, everybody. I, I just say sorry because I'm, I, I went to the dentist, so I cannot talk very well. Uh, <laughs> uh, my name is Luciana Berkovich. I'm part of the Legal Empowerment Network team as well. And I've been working in this report with Marta, with Lynette, with Temis, and all the other organizations. And I'm very excited for this conversation and to plan next step with our work in, in the network on gender justice in, in the future with you all in this call. So we have lots of expectation on the call today. So I'm very glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Luciana. Wura. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, my name is Wura Oluwa Ayodele. I'm from Phoenix in Hamza, Nigeria. And I'm excited um, about today to very wonderful conversations. It's nice to see you again, Wura. Welcome, Rhoda. Is somebody called Rhoda Toyden? If you're speaking, you're on mute. Okay. Or maybe we'll come back to you, Elizabeth. Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm just checking to be sure my uh, my audio is okay. It's nice Perfect. to be here and great to be here. Thank you, Elizabeth Mutano. Hi, everybody. My name is Mutano. I'm the Legal Department at Turkey in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, I'll be joining you today for the Thanks, Mutano. Naima. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Naima Issa Sebi. I work with FIDA Uganda, and I'm so excited to be here once again. Thank you, Naima. Vanessa? Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Vanessa Katunji. I also work at FIDA as an intern, and I'm also really excited to be here today. Welcome, Vanessa. Barbara? Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Barbara Kitui. I work for the Governance and Security Program Secretariat at the Ministry of Justice and Constitutional Affairs in Uganda. I'm glad to be here and I look forward to Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Barbara. We... Oh, sorry. In... <laughs> okay. Thank you for joining us, Barbara. We missed you last time and we're glad you could make it today. Yes, I'm sorry I couldn't make it last time. I ha we had a presentation, and I and, and I had to be there because I was one of the presenters. Yes, okay. thank you for inviting yes. me. You're welcome, Barbara. Suleiman Sonke. Somebody by the name. Oh, oh, sorry. Is that is that me? Mm -hmm, that's you. <laughs> I, I I just had someone uh, uh, next to me. I'm I'm outside on the road. Um, I'm I'm Suleiman uh, Suleiman Henry from Sunkitch in the Justice. Um, what else am I saying? Sorry. Just introducing yourself and the country you're from. Oh yes, from from South Thank Africa. You. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Suleiman. You're in fine company today. <laughs> Thank and you. I think that's <laughs> that's almost everybody who has introduced themselves, except for Rhoda. Um, you haven't introduced yourself, and somebody called Amos 
they're struggling with connecting to the audio. As soon as you do, you can please just put your name and your organization and country in the chat. It'd be good to know who we are meeting with today. So uh, as I said before, this is the second part of the launch of the Gender Justice Report during and beyond the COVID-19 crisis. Last but not least, my name is Amy Ongeso. I'm your moderator for today. I work for the Legal Empowerment Network that is convened by Namati, and I am based in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, in the first part of the launch that was held last week, we discussed the findings of the study and how they resonated with our realities of legal empowerment organizations. So I'm glad to say the findings in that report is what's happening on the ground. And we said, yes, we can see ourselves in that report. We looked into the challenges faced, the innovative legal empowerment approaches, and community-centered interventions that worked, and what could be changed in terms of policy as we build back better to ensure that women facing violence are supported during and after the pandemic. Uh, I know I have made reference to gender justice report. You'll find it in the chat. And you'll also find a brief write-up of what we discussed last week in the chats as well. Now, today, <laughs> we hope to put our findings into action. We just didn't need to talk and say, oh my goodness, this is not working. Oh my goodness, this is working. We really need to put action into those words. What concrete steps can we take to implement some of the key findings? And how can we address some of the key challenges together? So to allow for in-depth discussion, we will have a breakout groups and then we'll have facilitators lead these discussions around the challenges and solutions which your organization faces in combating GBV during the pandemic and the support you need to improve your legal empowerment interventions to better respond to gender injustices. Um, so just to walk you through the questions quickly, the first question will focus on what you wish to learn from other organizations in terms of responding to GBV in terms of crisis? What would you need in order to improve legal empowerment interventions to respond to gender justice? The second question will focus on what can you teach other organizations about legal empowerment interventions to gender justice in times of crisis? And lastly, what challenges faced by your organization in their, just, in their gender justice, justice work could be addressed through collective action and advocacy at the regional level. I will repeat the last question. The English refused to come out clearly, but I'll do it right now. The last question focuses on the challenges faced by your organization in advancing gender justice work that could be addressed through collective action and advocacy at the regional level. So before we go into the breakout groups, we have a poll for you that will be led by my colleague, Mata. Thanks, Amy. Um, so before we start discussing more about future actions, we wanted to have a, an idea of what you guys um, think are the most relevant strategies and activities that um, as a network we can offer and we can do together. So I'm gonna launch two polls. Um, the first one is about methodologies and strategies. So you should be able to see it now. Um, yeah, so which, which of these, uh, there's a bunch of them, uh, would, are the most relevant to you? If you can choose up to three, uh, we have like organizing, we have community paralegals, research methodologies for advocacy, just to have an idea um, of what would be most useful. I can't for some reason see if you guys are answering, so Amy or somebody else, if you can see it. Oh, now, okay, yeah, right. okay. And yeah, no, it takes a while to go through the list and select the ones you prefer. Okay, just one minute more. Okay, we're almost there. I think I'll give a couple of seconds. Okay, 
Um, so you should all be seeing the results now. Is that correct? Amy, can Lynette, can you see the results? Yeah, okay. Um, so we see that uh, community paralegals and community driven strategies and scaling up a holistic legal environment model and sustainability, I think are the two that get most um, of the votes, which is, yeah, it, it's what we've been seeing when we've asked these questions um, in other spaces, which is, it's great to see that synergy. And then besides that, I would say the first one, use of technology for legal environment. Um, okay, I'll stop sharing this one. And I'll launch the second one. This one is more focused on what activities would be most useful to you. Um, so there's a combination of like learning and advocacy activities uh, that you can choose from. Again, we ask you to select like uh, three uh, learning exchanges for those that uh, haven't participated in ones that we've organized are just a week uh, where we gather different organizations and we focus on a very specific um, learning issue. Um, and it's very much based on peer-to-peer -peer learning. I see Taita is just joining us. Hello. Um, the form didn't pop up on my end. Oh, so you can you can participate uh, of the poll, um, Barbara? Yes, please. Oh, I'm sorry about that. If you can see, if you can at least see it, and you want to just type it in the chat, um, that's fine. If not, we can share it later on, and you can give your input for sure. Okay, we give one one minute and then we can close this one too. Okay, so for this one, Joint advocacy actions at the regional level is the one that has most more votes, which is wonderful because that's what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> so that says that we're on the right track. Um, and then besides that, we also have uh, online courses and learning exchanges. So again, this strong focus on learning from each other, which is it's great. Um, Amy, I give it back to you. Thank you so much, uh, Marta. Right now, I will just share my screen so that we can, you know, see the questions one more time. Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I shared the wrong screen. I'll share the right the right screen right now. Just a second. There we go. So I hope you can um, see the questions clearly now. Um, yeah, so these are the discussion questions. And now you will be assigned 45 minutes. Each group is going to discuss these questions. And I think given the number that we are, we will have two groups each and you'll be randomly assigned a group. And in this group, you will have a facilitator and you'll go through all of these questions and you have 45 minutes to do so. So we'll give you a few seconds just to see the questions again. And then now Mutanu, I hand it over to you to take us into the breakout groups.
I um I think we're all back. <laughs> um, I don't know about you, but our conversation was very interesting and Rhoda was just in the process of telling us what she's doing on her way to Lagos to have um, a paralegal initiative and we had to come back to the main room. Um, this is the session now we'll get um, a feedback from the interesting discussions in the group. So I believe we had a group that was being facilitated by Bura, one by Lynette and the other by Reta Bile and who will be assisted by Naima in the report back. So um, we'll start with you, Lynette. Um, what's the feedback from your group? Okay, thanks, Amy. And um, so the feedback from our group in terms of um, what we want to learn, and um, you know, and what we you know what we desire to learn from other organisations, and um, it, it really it really comes down to to how people well well how different organisations um, formalise and structure and 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 strengthen. Their, their paralegal systems and for us you know for, okay so we, we had a very small group I should add that like and, and it was it was us and um, us like representing you know representing um, an organization that um, that actually does grassroots group and um, work and then we had two two other you know two other organizations that do quite different things and so for us that was you know that's the main learning that we would like to get from get from others to know how to and um, you know how to better how to better equip our community paralegals, how to put in better structures of training, of um, empowerment, of creating sustainable systems of, um, of grassroots legal, legal empowerment work and in, the, in the communities that we work with. Like that, was, that was the key in terms of what we, what we hope to learn. Um, and then when, when it comes to the question of, um, of the challenges that we believe that we can address through, uh, through collective action, and there were, there were two main points that, that came to the fore. And the first was the first was through the formalization of um, of of the work of paralegals, and, and this is something that we think can can be strengthened in every you know in every country in Africa. That um, if if the work of paralegals are recognized by um, you know by an overarching body, and and also if you know if if community paralegals can be you know can be supported um, in. Yeah, in, in ways that that really truly recognize that they work, that would make a big difference, and that's something that we can you know that we can work toward and at, at a regional level, and and also we add um, you know the other the other challenge is that um, you know and this is looking at the broader picture is the fact that that poverty is is a cause of GBV and and is something that you know exacerbates GBV and all you know all over the world and that we can we can actually use collective action to advocate for um, universal income grants and in you know in African countries that we actually address the poverty issue and if, if through you know through that like broad broad approach so those were those are the two challenges that we you know that came to the fore that we that we feel can be addressed through collective action um I'm nodding with you because in our group I think we had a similar discussion and similar outcomes, especially on the question of strengthening and recogni recognition of paralegals. But before we go, we go in depth into what we discussed, I'll invite Ura to share um, what your group discussed in terms of collective learning or collective actions moving forward. Okay, um, thank you, Amy. So for collective actions um, uh, moving forward, we, we looked at the fact that um, financing efforts, you know, for gender violence is critical and important, and of course is um, a challenge, you know, for every, all organizations that are working in this space. And so we looked at how, you know, we could actually come together at a regional level, you know, uh, and use different forms, you know, different activities to push and encourage governments to fund you know, legal empowerment work in, in, in communities, um, especially, you know, interventions, you know, that have to do with gender violence, like police and rescue centers and shelters, you know, um, and for survivors. And um, we also looked at, you know, how we can design and develop proposals, you know, at, um, at a regional level for funding, um, more or less like help smaller organizations, you know, the bigger ones help the smaller ones. And I think this is really critical. Um, um, we also looked at um, maybe creating um, a regional policy, you know, that, that would help funding for organizations um, to, 
to be able to advance the legal empowerment work. And um, um, lastly, I think something else we talked about really, which which um, ran through the beginning to the end, was the fact that it's critical to you know continue to have capacity building you know sessions and programs you know for paralegals. Um, to continue to strengthen them to help also digitalize their work um, um, and um, more or less bridge the gap, you know, between those who are in the local, in the rural communities and those um, in the urban communities, you know, provide digital tools that they can leverage on to make their work more effective. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hura. Last but not least to mm. our group, Retabile mm. Naima. So maybe we'll start with a few notes from Naima and then Ritabile, and I will conclude uh, with uh, the findings from the group. Um, uh, thank you, Amy. So um, our group's discussion did not really, um, it's not far from what other groups were discussing, but uh, the most important things that are important to note was the fact that um, our discussion was around what we can do jointly as a region, and that is in relation to, on top of the paralegals being formalized, um, have advocating for a, a judiciary system that focuses on women and children, instead of it just being general. With the adversary um, form nature of our courts, we need women protected when um, it's a case in relation to gender-based violence and things that um, also sexual gender-based violence cause of the exposure and them have running a risk of being um, facing victimization and abuse for the second time. So we thought that was important. And also the other issue we discussed was the ratification of, um, of the Maputo protocols and the different treaties in relation to gender-based violence that we really need to advocate for, but not only stop at that, but ensure that as a region, Countries just don't ratify it, but we hold them accountable and ensure that they stick by what the treaties provide. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I'll give it back to Amy to proceed with the other issues that we discussed. Thank you. Yes, at a regional level, there was consensus that we need to come together. And there was a brilliant suggestion, and I think this came from Rhoda from FIDA, Nigeria, that we should, uh, they, I think they're in the process or they're beginning to work on a regional report on combating the effects of GBV at uh, regional level, which they hope to you know, use for advocacy purposes. And maybe this is an opportunity for us to come together to work on this report on combating the effects of uh, GBV. You know, as we build back better, we still have to grapple with the social and economic fallout from the, from the pandemic and how the pandemic has been handled by our various states and governments. Um, we also had um, that one thing that we should do as a region is in terms of learning from each other, is we noticed that in some countries, the coordination was not very good at uh, with the national NGO level. In some countries, the coordination was well. And we also had in some countries where the collaboration with the state was something that we could emulate. Although in most of the cases, you'll find that the state is also a perpetrator of some of the violations that we were discussing. So we would like to learn on how to collaborate more with the state, how to collaborate more with NGOs, so that we're able to respond better and more effectively in times of crisis. Um, Reza Bile. I think it's been well summed up. Um, we also looked at academic institutions and how they can help to the advocacy initiatives. So in Southern Africa, there has been a similar study conducted focusing on Zimbabwe, South Africa, and I'm not sure which other countries. So how do we then take those learnings and agitate for change? And um, another big thing that was pointed out is implementation. How then do we monitor implementation and make sure the justice system is victim-centered? So building on work that exists. And the African Commission, the opportunities for collaborations as NGOs. So na ourselves as Namati, like we can do something about it. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for your um, very interesting suggestions in terms of how we should move forward. What is really exciting for us at least is that there's consensus that there is a regional direction and we have some concrete steps moving forward as a region. With that, um, Binet, I take it back to you. Okay, thank you, Amy. 
Um, so as we as we move toward the end of this um, of this workshop, there are a few there are a few concrete next steps that we um, that we are considering or you know that we are planning to to do, um, and these are concrete steps in terms of learning as well as advocacy. Um, and when it comes to learning, we are we are working on on expanding and um, yeah and well ex expanding our. Um, our regional reports. So we've we've done we've done some research with with four countries and five organisations on um, this grassroots justice response to, to GBV. And uh, but we really want to we really want to to expand this research and include include more research, uh, include more countries, include more experiences, and um, and this will then this will then be published as a sub-Saharan Africa regional report, which will exist on its own and which can be used. Um, as an advocacy tool at a regional level. And um, so at this point, I would like to invite any organization who would want to be part of this process of um, expanding and, and finalizing our, our research on this matter in, in the sub-Saharan African region to put up their hand and, you know, and tell us if, if you want to be part of this work. And, um, you know, we, we have already, we've already looked into Cameroon, Nigeria, South Africa, and Uganda, uh, but, but we are more than willing to interview more organizations, even within these countries. Um, and we would, we would be very glad to, um, to add experiences and voices from from different countries that might be quite different from um, you know, from these four that we have focused on. So if you're interested in being part of that, we would be very glad to invite you on board. Then in terms of advocacy, uh, we will we will be launching this theory report at um, GMAC, which is Gender is My Agenda. And uh, this, this um, yeah, and the next session for this is taking place in February of, uh, of 2022. And so, so we, we plan to use this forum to um, to speak to head of states and to um, to AU officials and to and to launch this report. And with the support of, of um, some head of states that um, that we you know that we have on our radar that can that can work as champions for and um, you know for the work that we are doing and taking you know taking our, our advocacy asks forward. And we also we also plan to approach uh, the African Commission um, and to use you know to use the forums that, that that's created through the NGO forum and also through um, observer status that will. Enable us to, um, you know, to, to address the commission to, um, you know, to put to put specific asks that we that we believe that the commission can um, can take forward for us, and um, you know, so so we want to work as a collective to, um, you know, to to approach to approach that forum and to con and you know, and leading up to that, we will be concretizing the, the, the you know the, the specific the specific points that we have mentioned today, and we will be you know we'll be we'll be expanding and concretizing that work. And so if, if your organization would want to be part of that, please also do let us know. You can you can tell us now on the meeting um, or you can you can send me or aim me an email if you if you would like to be part of, of our collective advocacy efforts and of our um, of our of our research. So just a quick question, sorry uh, Lynette. Um just joining in, in which capacity as as researcher, as informants, um as data collectors, in which capacity? Okay, that's a great question. I'm sorry, I was making assumptions. <laughs> and so the nature of our study is that it's a participatory research. And so the, the organizations that have been part of this had participated by um, firstly completing a survey that you know that 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 speaks to the challenges they faced during lockdown and, and the innovations that they employed and also how they had worked with the institutional responses. And so, so that was there was a, a comprehensive survey along with um, along with an interview and like sharing sharing case studies. If you have like very good you know, very good case studies that can that can be really meaningful learning and um, support for other organisations in the region. So that's what participation would look like. I and mean, it's it's really like this this you know and you know, and, and I mean many of the organisations here have been have been we've been walking this this road together and then and this also you know opens up doors for us to um to, to have spaces where we can where we can learn from each other and we can and we can we can also undertake activities together but yeah but that's what the research component would, would look like so yeah okay Lynette uh that is a very good one and uh, is a good development but I think to go further on this maybe you just write a, a brief uh, concept I mean a brief note on the concept of what it is all about and share it that way uh, people will be better informed to take a decision as to whether to be a part of it. So you just make a small write up on it. I think that way it will be better so that uh, we will really look at it and uh, know whether you want to be a part of it. Thank you. That's a good suggestion, Rona. Yeah. Um, do you have any other contribution in terms of way forward? 
or in case we missed uh, regional collective action that we should take, please feel free to mention it right now. <laughs> I, it, it, it's me again, sorry. May I, I don't have a hand to raise, so can it's I It's okay, go? Suleiman, go ahead, yes. <laughs> After you is Rhoda. After you is Rhoda. <laughs> So, so just because we recently completed a, a baseline for, for Generation G, and, and I mean Generation G specifically focuses on advocacy as well. So, so one, and one of the key findings was that often the, the people who we lobby to, the, the influencers and decision makers, they often do not have the, the correct knowledge of, of the issues that we are advocating for. So even when they do decide to take action, or, or change laws or anything like that. The 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 action is not um, properly articulated. So uh, it, it, it's something that is, that was missing in the presentations. Um, so that reflection just came to me. And I mean, the other one is would be meaningful and inclusive youth participation. Um, just because young people are the primary victims, and 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 they should they, thus be uh, the private resource of, of finding solutions to the issues as well. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Suleiman. Rhoda? Yeah, yeah, I just want to say something because I'll soon be shutting down. I'm approaching where I'm going for my program. I agree with all the presentations that were made, especially on the issue of funding. Um, we have to talk about uh, um, budget. I mean, we have to talk up to our, our countries, our states about the need for a responsive budgeting when it comes to the issues of women, just like the rural uh, uh, race, that, that, that I agree with, with it. And then the issue that my brother just mentioned, yeah, we have to really be sensitive to it. We have to talk about um, inclusive governance and whatever we're doing, we have to bring in all the people that are the youths is important. And the um, inclusive governance that women are at the right place to uh, take decisions on issues affecting us is key. And access to justice, yes, we, we, it, is, it, it has a lot to do with uh, what happens in the court to women and all that. And we know like one of us said, um, victims of the FGBB get um, secondary victimization from going to court and the way they are, man, uh, uh, they are handled and all that, even the way uh, cases are reported on the gender-based violence is not right. So these are issues that we ha all have to put together. And for me, access to justice, honestly speaking, one of the best way forward is to advocate for um, courts that will handle this, handle this case because that way, some of these issues that we're complaining about would have been taken care of. All the secondary victimizations, like you have sexual assault referral centers in quite a number of places. When we have these courts, it will really streamline the issues affecting uh, SGB uh, survivors. And you know, most times they don't want to go to court because of victimization, uh, uh, stigmatization, reprisal attacks and all that. So these are issues that we really have to put together, but most importantly, we have to talk about the youth and the, everybody has to be included. And when we are talking about issues that affect a target group, they have to be aware that we're talking about these issues. So that at the end of the day, it's not a fruitless uh, venture that we're embarked on. So we need to do a lot of sensitization on what we are about to do. That's all I want to say. And I thank you for this opportunity to be a part of it. And I see the concept not will decide whether to be a part of it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for, the, for your input and all the best in the function that you're going to right now. Yes, what, there's one point that Rhoda mentioned that is quite important and it's that of inclusiveness. So um, I think in the, when we were sharing our findings in the first part of the launch of this gender study, one thing we found is that the state's response to the COVID-19 restrictions were not engendered. They were not looking at it through a gender lens. Now, as we're speaking about uh, recovery, now that we're speaking about building back better, these approaches should be engendered. We should be at the table, we should be consulted, and we should be, be able to design what this recovering and building back better is. And so through this, you know, this regional um, report or regional study that we want to do together may have some of those policy recommendations moving forward. Um, any other contribution? So I want to take my leave. Yes, Rhoda. Thank you, Thank you so much. much. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you. Um.
just one more round of contributions or even a comment, suggestion, we'd be happy to have it. Okay, so I will assume Maybe that silence me. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Rita B. Uh, just just how affirming it is to hear that we have similar challenges across contexts and even Gafida or things in Nigeria can be applied to deep salute can be applied to another context. So thank you for the space and the opportunity for cross learning that has been very yeah big. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Retabile. Thank you all so much for your contributions, for your suggestions moving forward. As we come to the tail end, I'd like to invite my colleagues, Luciana, Abby, to share some of the comments they have before we call this a wrap. Just wanna say it was an honor to, to join this conversation and to, uh, and to hear more from the group and we will be working, moving forward to turn these words into action. Thank you, Abby, Luciana. Yes, yeah, just to second, Abby, to say that I hope that this is the beginning and we will sit together how to continue these actions and also to have uh, this is a regional conversation, but we also aim to have, want to have cross regional discussions, learning, and collective action. So we so now is in our is, is, is our responsibility to continue this, and we will so we hope that this so we want to go next step by step growing from here and the next steps is this regional report that, report that we are very excited to be working together on that then advocacy at regional level but we also want to explore more peer-to-peer -peer learning and, and collective action at regional and global level thank you so much luciana um uh, lynette might you have some closing words yeah you know, I, I just want to say a word of thanks to everyone who has joined our conversations and have been part of our meetings yes last week and this week and you know it's really it's really a privilege to be able to um to have this 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 space where we where we get to learn from people from all over the continent and even beyond so thank you very much for your participation thank you lynette thank you once again enjoy your evening morning or afternoon and we, we will be in touch with you in the coming weeks bye